Hi, this is Alex Fernandez with Bud and Doug Walters Auto Sales here in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Today I'll be doing a video going over some of the primary features inside of this 2019 Toyota RAV4 Adventure. We'll start by talking about the touchscreen and the buttons around it. We'll work our way down into the climate control, then to the drive modes here next to the shifter, and then we'll work our way over to the steering wheel, and the stocks behind it, and the screen in the gauge cluster. Some buttons down to our left side here and on our door, and then we'll end right up top there. Coming back to the touch screen, this is where we'll interact with our radio, our audio, Bluetooth, auxiliary, also our navigation, and Apple CarPlay as well. As you see along the side of the screen here, there are several buttons for accessing the primary functions of the screen. We have the home button up on the top left. And that opens the screen that you see here, which has snapshot views of just some of the primary functions. So we have our audio, we have our phone, and we have our navigation. We have a menu button, which gives us access um, to all the features here on the screen. You'll see destination for our navigation, audio, phone, apps, projection for Apple CarPlay, info and setup, along with display settings down in the bottom there. We have our audio button, which opens whatever it is we're listening to. You'll see we have a menu on the left side of the screen here, where we can access the different features of the audio. We have our source button up at the top, which gives us access to AM, FM, satellite, Bluetooth, USB, and a few other internet radio apps that you can run on your phone. We have our presets list, shows us what station we're listening to and gives us our presets along the bottom. To change your station, you can use the tuning dial here or the seek buttons there. To set a preset, simply push and hold and wait for that station to fill in there. We have radio replay where we're able to rewind and um, fast forward or pause live radio. We have a station list, which will compile a list of FM stations in the area for you. We have our options page, which just gives us some options for uh, the FM and satellite and AM radio. Uh, we have your scan button in there as well. And the last thing we have is the sound settings, those including your treble, mid-range, and bass, and your fader and balance settings. So you can adjust where that sound is located or coming from in the vehicle. And the bottom one there is the automatic sound levelizer, just makes things sound a little smoother. Moving on from the audio section, we're gonna press map. Opens up a map display of where we are currently. If we push menu, we can open up that destination. And then we're able to actually punch in and search for our destination there. Uh, you can search either a full address, you could search for a point of interest, um, search as city, you can kind of do that however you'd like to, to navigate. We could also search um, from favorites if you save those into the car. We have Destination Assist, which actually connects you with a person to navigate. We also have recent emergency services, contacts, address, and points of interest there. Moving on to the right side, we have our seek and track buttons there. We have our phone button. There are no Bluetooth devices connected to the car right now. So you'll see, we can go in here and we can actually see what devices have been connected. Connect them if we'd like to, or we can add a new phone um, if you're pairing up a new device. I'm gonna go to the setup menu here. If we go to Bluetooth and the registered device or remove device, we can delete previous devices uh, if you had a new phone or upgraded. And there's also a section in here. If we press that back button, we also can add a new device as you see there. Moving to that apps button, that will open this screen here where we have two categories, infotainment apps and communications apps. 
These require uh, either the, the apps to be downloaded on a connected smartphone and plugged into the USB port um, or subscriptions in certain cases for some of these as well. I'll go back to that home page. Press the menu button here. The projection icon there gives us the capability to use Apple CarPlay. And you'll see we have to connect the iPhone to the USB port to use that feature. That will allow you to display your maps from your phone, your phone calls, your texts, and your music or podcasts right on the screen of the car here. That info category, we have some eco, which is fuel economy information, traffic incidents, and we can search that through those menus. We have weather, and we also have vehicle alert history showing us uh, previous maintenance requirements and things like that. And you can delete that as it fills up so you're not getting stuck with all that stuff. Moving down to the climate control here, we do have dual zone climate control. We have driver controls here, passenger controls here. I'm going to push this button here. That that button is the occupancy mode, so if you're just in the car by yourself, you can um, tell a car that, and it will just give you a control of your side and um, prioritize your vents as the driver. To change temperature, simply rotate the dial clockwise for warmer, counterclockwise for colder. Within the driver's side dial, we have an auto mode button. When that's activated, the vehicle will take over fan speed and um, where the air is being sent to and allow you to control the temperature. We have an off button here at the bottom, and then we have front defroster, rear defroster, an eco mode for the heating and cooling system. We have fan speed buttons here. You'll see that displayed on the screen as we change that. We have the mode button, tells the air which vents to come out of. We have a recirculate mode, that occupancy button, and then on the passenger side we have the sync mode where the two zones are paired together and changed together from the driver's control. Or the passenger is free to change their temperature if they'd like it to be different. Last thing there we have is the air conditioning button just beneath. Right underneath our climate controls, we have the off switch for the traction control, which is on by default every time you start the vehicle. But if you'd like to turn it off, you can do so there. And then we also have our cooled seats and our heated seats here for the front two occupants. And you have high, medium, and low settings for that. Moving down here to the next, to the gear shift, we have our parking brake, which is electronic. You pull on the bottom to engage it, you put your foot on the brake and push on the top to disengage. We have auto brake hold. What that will do for you is when you come up to a stoplight with it activated, you're able to then have the vehicle hold the brakes for you and you can actually take your foot off the brake and when you push the gas it will release for you. Here we have three drive modes, eco, normal, and sport. Right now we're in normal mode. There's eco in the green and sport in the red. Those will just change a little bit about the behavior of the car and how it handles um, as far as some of the acceleration and things like that. This dial here is our terrain dial. So you'll see we have mud and sand mode here by rotating counterclockwise and we have rock and dirt there by rotating clockwise and if we push right in the middle we have the normal function beneath that we have the snow mode again just changes some of the behavior of the car to prioritize better traction in the snow and we have our hill descent control button there moving to the steering wheel we have the cruise control and some audio controls here our cruise control is adaptive cruise so we are able to adjust not only the speed that you've set but also the distance that you'd like this vehicle to maintain with others in front of you, and the car will slow itself down and speed itself up as required, given the distance and speed you've set. To use that cruise control, simply push the on-off switch here, and you'll see a message show up in the gauge cluster, radar cruise active. To adjust the, to set the speed, press the set button. Once the speed is set, you're able to speed up with the plus sign, slow down with the minus sign, and we have a, a cancel button here and a resume button at the top. To adjust that distance gap for the adaptive cruise control, we can push this button here, and you'll see we have three different intervals of distance to choose from. 
one being the closest, three being the furthest. One other button here is our lane keep assist. Uh, with clearly marked road lines, if you were to drift out of your lane, the vehicle would attempt to nudge you back into your lane with a small steering correction if you did not first do so. You can turn that on and or off at your discretion. Underneath here, we have buttons to skip through our presets, left and right, and then a mode button, which cycles through AM, FM, and satellite, or Bluetooth, and whatever else is available to us for audio. On the left side of the wheel here, we have the volume controls, and then we have the button to answer an incoming phone call through our hand free system. We have the voice command button to tell the car to place a call or, or perform another command. And then we have a little menu control pad here, which controls the screen up in the gauge cluster there. If we move left and right, we have different tabs across the bottom of the screen there that we're able to cycle through. The first one being uh, fuel economy information. It shows us average fuel economy, distance to empty, and also an eco indicator. The next section shows us the settings of our safety settings or safety systems for this vehicle. So you'll see that radar ready message displayed and that's pertaining to that adaptive cruise control. If we go to the left, to, to the right again, we have our audio section. And then we have a trip section and all wheel drive readouts. We have the ability to turn off and change some settings pertaining to our driver safety systems here. And then we just have a messages center at the end if there was anything required for maintenance or things like that. Looking at the stocks behind the wheel, we have our wipers here. A single click up on that stock is just one swipe on the front wipers. If we click down to the first position, we're in auto. These are rain sensing wipers and they will speed up and slow down given the amount of rainfall on the windshield. But you're also able to adjust it yourself like a traditional intermittent wiper there. The next click is low speed and the final click is high speed. The rear wiper, simply rotate the end of the dial. We have the intermittent and the on position for that. And then we have spray for both front and rear windshields to spray for the front, pull the stock towards you, and to spray for the rear, push the stock away. On the left side here, we have our headlight controls. The headlights are automatic, they're set there now. We also have fog lights as well. On this stock, we also have our blinkers and our brights pull to flash and push away to turn on. This vehicle is also equipped with automatic high beams. That basically means that the vehicle will turn on its high beams so long as there's not an oncoming vehicle uh, in, in the other lane coming towards you. Once that vehicle's passed, the high beams will come back on for you automatically. You're able to turn that on or off using this button right there. Looking down below here, we do have that automatic high beam button. We have a brightness adjustment for the back lighting here when the headlights are on. We have the heating element for the windshield wipers. We have a heated steering wheel and we have the power lift gate button here. We're able to open and close that right from inside the cabin here. Poking out of the dash here, we do have one other button. That's just for the trip odometer there. Push and release to cycle and push and hold to reset there. And that'll keep track of things like your mileage and fuel economy for you. Looking at the door, we have our window switches, we have our door locks, our window locks, and our mirror adjustments right there. And finally, moving up above, we have our dome light switches, a button that determines whether the door opening turns those dome lights on, and if closing the door shuts them off. And we have a button to turn on all the dome lights in the whole car. We have our sunroof controls here. We have the tilt up and tilt down function and the open and close function. And then behind this little cover, we have an SOS button, uh, which is based on uh, Toyota Safety Connect system, which is a subscription-based service um, offering things like roadside assistance. Little glasses case right there. And your sun visors have mirrors with lights and are able to detach to give you better coverage. Those are the primary features of this 2019 Toyota RAV4 Adventure. If you have any more questions, please refer to us at waltersautos.com or feel free to call at 269-375-7008 with any further questions or to make an appointment. Thank you.